is up everybody this is WDG and today I would love to showcase the new version 3 of the Mugen Lutris installer that the Supreme team released I believe a couple days ago now and the reason why I'm making a video on this now is because it kind of has me mind blown and shocked in a way because how simple it has got basically for an end user so most may know that the previous Mugen Lutris installers out there, like the line and all that, you had to follow a bunch of steps and to get everything working was kind of a headache. But then the Supreme team made it simple where you would just type in a one line command and everything would install for you. And that was great and everything. But the problem was for me was each game needed a script and it was very sensitive to the location. So if your executable had like a space in it, like it would not load, it would give you like an error, so you'd have to add like a dash or a symbol between the name. But the Supreme team made it even better on version 3. And it has me still mind blown and very impressed because now it's as easy as you know typing one command into PuTTY or into your terminal on the Pi 4 and installing everything. And if something's installed already, it will just skip it. So it just makes it a very easy install process already. And now you just drag your games over into the wine folder after it installs and the games just load. Because before each game, you would have to have a script made for each game to launch. So if you added a Mugen game, you would have to make an executable script to load that game. And it was kind of very, I don't know, time consuming in a way. And it was kind of ridiculous that like you, you had like a hundred games and you'd have to have a hundred scripts. That That's just crazy. And how... If you had a space in your game name, it wouldn't load because it wouldn't find it. I don't know. But <laughs> this version 3 has me very mind blown. I'm very impressed with what the Supreme team has done now. So for example here, I'm going to show you. I'm not going to show you guys how to install it because it's honestly, you open up, for example, this terminal here and it's one line. I'll post down below the link to how to install it. It's just one line type in the, into the terminal here or on PuTTY and it just installs. And uh, this does work on every build that I've tried. I've tried this on Ultra. I've tried this on a stock build. I've tried this on random builds. I've downloaded it off of uh, the internet, like Arcade Punks, and it just installs and it just works. So what you're gonna do now, so I'm gonna go to the RetroPie folder here, if I can find it. Looks like I'm probably passing it. So if you go to RetroPy folder and you go to ROMs and you go to Wine, let me scroll down here to the bottom. Wine. So what you're gonna do is open up this game folder, and all you're honestly gonna do is drag over your your games into this folder. It's easy as that. So as you can see, I have this game folder here with the Mugen executable, and uh, when you load up RetroPy, it's gonna show that it's not gonna show all these basically all these files here it's just going to show the executable files that you have located in your folder so if you have an executable file that's not needed i would honestly remove it so it's not showing up 100 executable files but yeah so that's mugen installed so once you drag over your games if you would like i which i actually recommend is setting up your q joypad for it so what's also new about version 3 is let's say you have a bunch of games at it with different configurations and you want to have a mouse and keyboard input but you don't want to hook up a mouse and keyboard to your your Pi 4 and you just want to use your controller so what you would do is you actually go to the desktop environment like I am here which will be installed with the installer and open up Q joypad you'll either be here or you can click start accessories and just open it up here so as you can see I was testing applications already I was testing Windows Paint so what you would do is you would drag your games into the games folder, go to the desktop environment, and um, so I'm actually going to remove this. Actually, no, I'm not going to remove that. I'm just going to type in a game. I'm going to add in a game name. Let's say I wanted to add, um, I don't know, game example. <laughs> I don't even know. I'll put game uh new so what you would do is you click okay and you would add you know 
So what do you want your button one to be? So you press on your keyboard or your, your controller, A, B, X, Y, Z, whatever on your controller, it depends on what controller you have, left bumper, right bumper, and you would map it out that way. And then once you're done, you would just, you know, update and then, or add, and that was it. So once that's done, make sure that the same name as QJoyPad is the exact same name as the executable file that you have listed in the games folder. So let's, like I said, if I add a game new, so you would actually have to go here and you would type in game new. And you would add the actual space as well, because now with the version three, spaces do work, which is very nice to see. So basically that's all I wanted to cover, but I'm gonna go into the RetroPie part now and show you guys, I have it installed. So if I go back here and I go to wine, as you can see, I do have my games folder here with the Mugen. Obviously, I have to reboot Emulation Station to show the game name change. So if I go here and let me just restart Emulation Station quickly. And if I go to wine and I go to games, Mugen, I have the game new, right? So now that I want to start this up, What's going to happen is that new file that I made with QJoyPad will also load into um, the executable automatically. So whatever I have mapped out for that executable file, it will be read automatically. I don't have to point it to anything or do anything special. So right now what it's doing is it's actually loading the QJoyPad configuration files and starting up my game, as you can see here. So now... If I press any button on my keyboard, which I press exit, so start and select, I have it mapped to, it boots out using a controller. So that's the beneficial part about version 3 as well. So now it's everything's just automatic, which is very impressive. But basically that was it, guys. I just wanted to showcase, you know, the improvements on Wine. Like, it's kind of mind-blowing to how fast it's moving. And they are working on some type of con automatic controller setup too as well. So... When you set up your controller through emulation station it will map those buttons automatically to a q joypad and your executable files so once that comes out like it's going to be a perfect installer in a way <laughs> there'd be no setup necessary at all you run the installer and everything would just be done which would be awesome but that's all guys i really appreciate you guys watching and uh peace out